I'm Johannes, I'm a product manager with Glassbox, and we're a company building software for virtual production. Today, I'll be showing you uh, some workflows and Dragonfly, which is our virtual camera tool. So let's talk about virtual camera in general real quick. Dragonfly is a virtual camera. That means that you can take a hardware device like uh, this iPad and use it to move it like you would use a physical camera. And that allows you to film into an Unreal Engine scene or a Maya scene, but we'll be looking at Unreal Engine today and essentially use your iPad as your viewport, as your window into the virtual world. So why do people use VCam, virtual camera? Virtual camera is a great way to create animation sequences for cameras because it allows you to create natural movement. Just moving an object like you would use a physical camera means that your resulting shots will really look like footage from actual cameras. And it's also quicker a lot of the time because you're not hand keyframing animations. There are amazing animators for camera animation, but still, if you are uh, skilled and if you have a good workflow around virtual camera, that'll usually be uh, the more efficient way to create these camera shots. And it also allows you to bring in people into the workflow, like DPs, like a director, like any cinematographer that wants to create the shots, but isn't quite comfortable uh, keyframing them in Unreal Engine. So um, let's uh, take a look at Dragonfly specifically. Um, I have Dragonfly running here on this machine. What's special about Dragonfly? Obviously, there's other virtual camera solutions as well. Uh, Dragonfly though, as I said, is, has been used widely throughout the industry. And that's because over the years, we've worked with a lot of uh, cinematographers, with large studios, with indie studios as well, and really drilled down on what makes a good virtual camera workflow. So Dragonfly has a lot of little aspects of it that mean that you will be creating shots with it in hopefully the most efficient way and also in a very customizable way. I've heard from studios that use this that they are typically creating uh, with like a single operator, uh, maybe over a hundred shots, usable shots in a day. And I think that's amazing. Yeah, so uh, let's take a look. Dragonfly, uh, as we're looking at it today, runs as a plugin inside Unreal Engine. So uh, you can see uh, I have Unreal Engine 5 running here and inside uh, our interface here, I've added these Dragonfly panels. Anything that's orange is typically a good indicator that that's a Dragonfly interface. So on the left side, we have our setup panel and on the right, we have our operator main. Setup we'll use to do a setup and operator main we'll go into in a minute. That's everything that you need to create shots while you're creating those shots. I don't wanna go into the details too much right now though. Um, the second aspect is our iPad, right? And one important aspect of this system is to allow you to really quickly jump in and connect your iPad. The only thing that I've done in terms of setup previously is I've connected both my computer and my iPad to the same Wi-Fi network here. You could also run Dragonfly through an Ethernet cable, but if you have a good Wi-Fi, that's plenty fast. So that's really all you need, a computer, an iPad connected through the same Wi-Fi connection. And then on my iPad, I have installed the Dragonfly companion app, which is available on the App Store. So all I have to do to connect them is in my uh, plugin interface, in the companion app connection section, click Start. And this will open up a server and then on the iPad you can see that our server has already popped up in the list here. We can just tap it and just like that we're connected to our scene and you can see on both the iPad and the uh, laptop screen here how we have a view into the same scene and I can really use this iPad to drive my virtual camera in this scene here creating some shots here right. So let's quickly talk about the scene that we're looking at. This is just an example scene. Um, this was been downloaded from the marketplace at some point. We have a lovely Japanese courtyard situation here. And then I have added an animation sequence here where there are these robots coming in and setting up a tea ceremony with some furniture from the house. 
So rather than just talking about um, the technical details, I want to create a few shots with here. And while doing that, show you the workflow. So let's set our viewport back to the Dragonfly viewport, which gives us this view into our world. And let's first talk about how we can move around in the scene. I already showed you I can just uh, walk around. Uh, this is six degrees of freedom, so I can also walk. I'm not going to do that too much today, um, but that's a way of finding a position. Sometimes you want to cover larger distances though. And one way of doing that is using joysticks. That could be a hardware joystick uh, just to, that you just connect to your computer. There's also hardware joysticks like this that you can clamp to your uh, iPad. This is called the GameWise, runs about 100 bucks. It's a great investment, gives you a bit of additional um, handling and also has these joysticks. Today, because I want to show you the most simple workflow, though we'll just be using the on-screen iPad, uh, the on-screen controls on the iPad. So I have these joysticks right here that I have uh, set up. All of this is reconfigurable as well. So I can go into the settings here and then say, move this joystick around a little bit or add new joysticks, whatever I want to do. And with this joystick, I can also move myself around in the scene, right? And this is really useful to find a position for my first shot where I want to take uh, a shot. So let's find one. Let's say I want to uh, take a shot here Can also scrub through my sequence a little bit to where the robots are coming in. Let's rotate myself around here a little bit to where I'm facing that door over there. By the way, all of the controls are available on the iPad and on the machine. I'm doing as much as possible from the iPad right now because I'm just one person here. But if you are a team, then it's nice to have an assistant doing some shots uh, helping out with changing settings from the machine. So let's say I want to uh, create a shot uh, here, maybe where these robots are flying in. I have my section and all I have to do is hit record here. You can see the animation is playing back and just like that I'm taking a shot. Right, and then having uh, taken a shot, what we can do is we can look at it. Dragonfly has this review section, so I can uh, just open that from my iPad and select the shot that we just took. Or alternatively, on my computer, I can switch this operator main to the review section, right? And then we can look at this shot. So we can play it back here. That's the shot that I just took. We can also um, you can see that there's a little bit of camera shake here. Uh, and we can ease that by applying some smoothing. We'll be seeing more of that a little later, but um, that's some smoothing there. And then looking at the shot again, you can see that my camera movement is just a lot smoother. This probably isn't the best shot, so let's go into our review list here and give this just one star, right? And this is a good way of keeping track of the shots that we did and finding them. Later, we can then sort for rating, we can search for shots by name. So this is just an additional layer that's nice. Notice also that I haven't done anything in Unreal Engine except for putting our uh, plugin in here. We really don't want you to have to worry about creating level sequences or anything like that up front. Dragonfly handles all of that. You simply install the plugin and then we're good to go. So let's go back and take another uh, shot here. Hopefully one that is a bit better than the one that I just took. So I think we can uh, find a better position in our sequence here. Maybe where well, they're leaving this door. And then let's do this again. One thing that I learned though with the last shot was that I didn't actually get the take that I wanted first try. One thing I can do to make that a little easier for me is I can uh, create a snapshot. Uh, a snapshot essentially is a bookmark in space and time that remembers where my camera is, where my sequence is at, and uh, what my camera settings were. So I can just hit create snapshot here, doing this on the interface, and you can see that we have the snapshot entry here. And this allows us to go back to this particular point in time. So if I'm uh, setting the sequence to a different position and also I'm going to move the camera away. I could also switch to completely different camera settings. Whenever I want to go back, I can simply hit go to 
and restore and I'm back at my initial point. And this is nice for scene scouting, right? We could go through here and create a couple of snapshots and then go through them one by one. But I'm actually going to use this to make my life easier in terms of create, taking the shot. So I'm going to hit record here and record my animation here right and maybe i'm not quite happy with this i can immediately set myself back to the uh, snapshot that i took here just by hitting go to and restore there we go i'm back at my position i'm back at my sequence position as well and just hitting record here again creating another shot maybe this is more what i want to do Another thing that's nice uh, if I'm trying to create a shot like this is I'm noticing I'm getting motion that's like slightly too short for me. I would move like to move my camera further. One thing I can do that is either walk further, but since we're a bit of a confined setting here, what I can also do is just scale myself up with this scaling section here. So I'll just increase my scaling slightly, I'll say to this, and now taking this, also let me go back to my snapshot position here to start the same shot and now you can see that with less camera movement i can actually move my camera inside this scene quite a bit right and maybe this is actually the shot that i'm happy with so go back let's go back into the review section and whenever i'm doing this by the way you can see that our playback is always synchronized uh, between our computer and our iPad as well. So if you're standing a bit away from the machine, you can still everything uh, see everything that's happening on your iPad as well. So we just took three shots. Uh, the first one I think wasn't as good. Uh, the second one, uh, let's look at it real quick. Also not as good. Give, let's give both of them one star. And then the fifth one I think really was what we were looking for. So let me give that Let's say four stars. It's not my best work, but it's it's good for what we're trying to do, right? Let me also apply some smoothing on this because there was quite a bit of camera shake, especially since I scaled myself up. That always amplifies things a little bit. So let's have some smoothing in here and let's review the shot that we took. Yeah, and I think that's quite a nice uh, shot that we got there. Uh, notice how we got to this final take a lot quicker by utilizing snapshots, by quickly just resetting us to the snapshot position, taking another take, taking another take until we have the perfect one. Cool. Let's move to a different type of shot. One thing that is very easy in the physical world is working with physical objects, right? I could take a camera and I could clamp it to this cart. And then when I was moving this card, the camera would move with the card, right? Not quite as simple in the virtual world where things tend to clip through each other. But one uh, way we can do that is with, is with Dragonfly's platforming tool. So I can, uh, let's uh, find a new starting uh, position here for a new shot again, or let's maybe move over slightly more. Um, so in this sequence, there's these robots. Right. And let's say we want to follow this robot that you can see here uh, and to create a bit of a follow shot for it. We could do that by just trying to follow it, but an easier way is to use platforming. So I can just select uh, this robot here and then I can also select which part of the robot I want to bind myself to. And then as I'm scrubbing through my sequence, you can see that I'm being moved along with the robot. Right. I can still freely move my camera, of course. Uh, I'm not uh, restricted in that sense, but I am moving relative to the robot now. Another thing that we could do as well is mirror the rotation of the robot. And this would be useful for a shot where, for example, we're sitting inside a car and the car is rotating. Right. So you can see now we're also being rotated with the robot. But I think for this shot, what we want to do is just mirror the rotation here. I'm also going to create a new snapshot. Snapshot also remembers that I have platforming on here. And then also let's switch to a slightly narrower lens for this one. So we have a bit of a tighter look. Cool. Uh, that's stored in my snapshot. So I can just update my snapshot to remember that I have a tighter lens. And let's take a quick shot here. Cool, you can see we're being moved 
down with the robot. That's nice. There was a bit of a clipping through uh, the tree there, so I want to prevent that. I can just go back to my snapshot real quick, um, move myself into a slightly different position so I'm not likely to clip through that tree. And then let's roll again with this shot. Taking a shot of this robot juggling its, its teapot. And you can see that in this case, I actually don't have to do much uh, movement at all here because platforming is already giving me most of the motion that I'm looking for, right? So that's nice. Let's take a look at what that shot looks like in our review section. The first one was not good. Let's discard that. And the second one that's reviewed. Also, let's give it a bit of smoothing here. That's often a good idea. So there we go. This is a fairly smooth shot. I think I would actually do this again to cut out some of the um, movement vertically here. But for our purposes, this is good, right? And I think this gives you a good idea of what platforming can be useful for. Another uh, thing that uh, we can use here to create a shot. Let's quickly go back to this position. Uh, actually, let's let's reset ourselves to our first snapshot, and then let's find a point in the sequence at the very beginning here, where uh, there is very fast action. So we have in the beginning of the sequence. Let's take a quick look at it. Uh, you can see there's this section where these robots are flying out of the window pretty quickly, and if I'm trying to follow them, that's pretty difficult, especially so, let's make this slightly more difficult even, especially so if I have a lens that is longer, right? So let's uh, say, let's go with like a 70 millimeter lens. And I would like to create a follow shot here where I'm following these robots as they come out of the window. Uh, again, like this is difficult though, let's give it a quick try. And just because of the yeah, movement of um, the robots in combination with my long lens can't quite do it. One way I can make this easier for myself though is by using what we call recording speed. Recording speed essentially modifies how quickly my animation sequence moves as I'm creating the shot. So I'm going to set my recording speed to 5, which just means that my animation sequence is going to play back at a fifth of its original speed, right? So let's try that again. Hit record with animation uh, slowed down by a lower recording speed value and you can see now that suddenly I have all the time in the world to capture this shot right there's going to be quite a bit of shake in this but that's something we can take out after the fact with smoothing here cool let's take a look at what that shot looks like that we just did by going into the review section again here and applying a bit of smoothing as well. Uh, with shots like this, it's always good to apply smoothing because there will be uh, quite a bit of shake otherwise. And you can see that we were able to create a follow shot here that's pretty accurate. So that's a nice way of using recording speed. There are actually teams who use recording speed all the time. Uh, we were talking to one team recently that ended up having all their shots uh, slowed down by 50%. I mean, the animation in them uh, slowed down by 50%, right? And um, just because they felt it gave them a little more control and it just made the work quicker in the end because they had to take less takes. That's a per personal preference, but um, recording speed is here to be able to take those shots, right? So we've created a bunch of shots here and obviously we could create more, uh, but I wanna quickly talk about what we can do with this then, right? So far, we've just been inside of Dragonfly. All these shots that we've taken are visible inside our review section here, but at some point, we probably want to bring them out of Dragonfly, right? And do something with it. Uh, maybe we want to do some, some Unreal specific thing uh, by editing the sequences as well. So what we can do is as like the last step of this workflow that we're using here, we can go into our review section and look at the sequences that we want to work with. There's a bunch of shots here that I've taken. Most of them aren't good. I've made it easier for me already by rating these. 
so I can simply select the three shots that I was actually happy with here. Batch, batch selecting them and then in my export section I'm gonna select to export this as a level sequence and I'm gonna hit export here and that just puts these shots as level sequences into this folder that I've selected. In my case that folder is inside my content browser, browser here so I can go in let me remove this uh, level sequence for Dragonfly so I can go in here in my content browser and look at these shots inside Unreal Engine, right? Just playing them back in Sequencer. So at this point, you can see that we're looking at this take as a level sequence. All my camera animation is here as a keyframe animation, right? We could even uh, look at this as a curve. Um, there is our keyframe animation uh, broken down to whatever frame rate we have selected. So we could also go in and edit this, but the beauty of the Visual Camera System is that most of the time, especially if you've applied some smoothing maybe, you will uh, not need to do match edits. A lot of uh, Visual Camera work for larger studios is actually pretty much out of uh, this camera uh, workflow without much editing and that really allows to be efficient with this as well right so one thing we could do now is we could um, create a little edit here so i could go in here and uh, uh, create a new animation uh, level sequence here let's call that uh, cut one and then i could open that up drop my three exported shots in here that I've taken and then align those on the timeline, right? So let's uh, line those up right after another here. So we're starting with this one. We should probably actually uh, start with the first shot that is uh, them coming out, right? So I'm gonna reposition this uh, real quick here again. This is our first shot that we want to start with and then this is our second shot and this is our first one, yeah, our third one, right? And so by doing this we can go through here and quickly play back the edit that we've done. So let's quickly take a look at the shot that we've done here. We've edited. So there's our robots coming out of the window we're moving into the position where this robot is juggling its teapot. This shot we should probably uh, tighten down a little bit. It's uh, too long, <laughs> I would say. And then we will move to our third shot here. There we go, where they're coming out of the house. Cool, so I hope this gives you an idea of uh, all the things that might go into a quick workflow like this. Uh, obviously, we would be creating a lot more shots. We would uh, then maybe not necessarily editing them in Unreal Engine. We would maybe just export them uh, from Unreal Engine individually and then edit them somewhere else. But the basic idea is always the same. The Dragonfly uh, allows us to just hit record as often as we want. All these tools help us to create our shots quicker. And then in the end, we can export them in whatever way we want to do. Dragonfly has a lot more to it. We have also a camera rendering. I'm not go really going to go into that, but just to show you what I'm talking about. For example, this lens that we're working with right here, uh, we could go into the lens profile and apply some lens distortion, right? Lens distortion is something that really uh, makes a shot even more realistic. So I can just dial in some distortion values here. And with that, we get a lens that is distorted, right? Another thing we could do is we could go in here and select uh, this to be an anamorphic lens. And then let's uh, go for a 1.5 squeeze ratio, for example. So we have an anamorphic lens now with some of the optical qualities like the anamorphic softness as well. And I can go in here and pull this out of focus, for example, and doing this, you'll see that we do get uh, the some of the optical qualities as well, like the round oval bokeh shapes that we're looking for in an anamorphic lens. Uh, both 
uh, anamorphic and uh, lens distortion are done by Dragons by adding an additional render layer. So we're um, going a bit beyond what the native engine, uh, engine rendering is doing for us here. But um, I'm not going to go into this too deep, just wanted to show you what else uh, there is. Dragonfly has other features as well. We can do simulcam, uh, we can uh, create shots here that, are, that we can edit afterwards in the review section. We can also live record our viewport. There's a lot of things that you'll discover as you're using this. When you are using it even more, you can also customize Dragonfly more. So all of our opera all of our UI functions are available as blueprints that we can expose. So I, on my iPad, for example, have a bunch of buttons. As you can see, um, all of these do individual things that I've set up. But to get started, really, uh, what I want to take you, what I want you to take away, is just how quick it is to connect the app, just hit record, and then these three functions that I've talked about, snapshots, platforming, and recording speed are really the things I think that'll get you started quickly. I hope that helps. If there's any questions, you can always get in touch with us or uh, CG Pro, I'm sure, will also be able to uh, help you with that. Yeah, I hope that gives you a good overview of Dragonfly and gets you started quickly. If you want to know more, you can always get in touch with us at glassboxtech.com. Also, thank you for CG Pro for having me here today. It's been a pleasure. And then the space that we're in actually is LightSail VR. Thanks for hosting us as well. See you soon. Get in touch with us. <laughs> bye bye.